This video is sponsored by Aura. A moment is a moment. Once that moment has been lived, it's gone. It's all about the soul and the vision. I love looking into people's souls, into their lives. That's a very magical part of it for me. I wish that I could fly to the sky so very high just like a dragonfly I fly over the trees and other seas in all degrees to anywhere I please Lenny Kravitz is a name we probably wouldn't associate with photography since over the years he has been known for his prolific musical and acting careers. However, what many of us didn't know is that Kravitz's father was a photojournalist in his own right and that Lenny Kravitz himself, to capture his lifestyle as an artist and musician traveling all over the world and meeting all sorts of people and being in all sorts of places. And one thing as well is that we probably didn't know is that he even made art out of the most unconventional situations. So I guess that today we have a lot to talk about. So buckle up for the last episode of White Noise. And today we're going to be looking at the photography of Lenny Kravitz, taking some lessons, conclusions, and also some thoughts on the whole series. So yeah, why don't you just go ahead, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, Let's go straight to another video. My photography relies on intuition. It's a gut instinct when you're shooting through the viewfinder at what's happening in the world. You see everything differently. You can't necessarily calculate or prepare for the outcome. It's necessary to adopt a new perspective through this prism in the moment. In that space of the camera's eye, all you have is feeling. So I'll snap the photo when it feels right. Lenny Kravitz, whose voice behind some of the hits like Fly Away, Are You Gonna Go My Way or American Woman, is a renowned singer, multi-instrumentalist and actor. However, today we're here to discuss another of his artistic ventures, and that is his photography. And Kravitz's first camera was given to him when he was 21 by his father. And Seema Kravitz, Lenny's father, was himself an accomplished photojournalist that worked at some point for NBC and covered the Vietnam War, working in the front lines for a year. And Kravitz, who started his musical career in his early 20s by signing up with Virgin Records, decided to use the camera to photograph his life as a musician on the road, the backstage of his shows, his travels between shows, and the places and faces he met and visited as his music gained more traction and became mainstream. As his popularity grew, he befriended photographers that worked with him, and he said that I would go into their dark rooms or studios and watch them work, and I thought it was magical. However, the transition to more serious photography work happened when Kravitz turned a funny stunt and this happened while he was at a red carpet one day and decided to pull out his camera and photograph those who photographed him. And this led to very interesting images which he started capturing more as he travelled and was constantly surrounded by paparazzi and fans all over the world who wanted to take a photo of him. And when showing this work and discussing it, the feedback was so good that Lenny Kravitz launched his first photo book and exhibition titled Flash back in 2015. And this attention to detail works really well with the black and white, which seems to add another dimension 
kind of like if the image was frozen in time and the context of it was being stripped of a certain reality and being put on a limbo in terms of time and space. And what's interesting as well for me is that these images reflect on themes such as the individual and his or her projected image. And also about the lack of privacy that people, such as Lenny Kravitz, have when they're constantly being put in the spotlight. And talking about privacy, you and me are probably not like, you know, Lenny Kravitz or any celebrity out there. We don't need to hire security. We don't need to deal with the mayhem and madness. However, one thing that has become increasingly important to us all, whether you're a celebrity or not, is privacy and security online. And so if you're looking to learn more about that and, you know, secure yourself, yeah, I got us some sort of information to talk to you about, and I think we can both learn a lot, you and me, with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is a personal digital security, identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, password management, an antivirus software, and a VPN all combined into one easy to use app. And the truth is that you might already have an antivirus or one of these services, but if you don't have all the tools you need for your online protection, it's like you're locking your front door whilst leaving your windows open. And honestly, guys, I can speak from experience. This has happened to myself. And I once had my email act and it was a complete nightmare. I couldn't access anything. And, you know, it is like I see it online all the time. uh, People being victims of all sorts of frauds and scams. And it is increasingly, it is very, very difficult these days as the world grows more technological and more digital to keep ourselves protected and private, you know, when we're navigating online. This is, that's why, you know, if you want to, try out all the services as well, I would recommend Aura's VPN because it allows you to navigate, um, you know, privately and, you know, securely, and you don't have to, you know, be worried about giving in any information, locations, etc. So it's pretty awesome. So if you want to sign up with Aura, um, you can do so at aura.com slash hopper, and they currently have an offer, which is two weeks free trial. And within these two weeks, you can try all these features that I mentioned, and I highly recommend you to try it out. And let me know down below if you do, what's your experience, and if you've found that your identity has been leaked at some point in time and Aura has helped you with it. So yeah, thank you Aura for sponsoring this segment, thank you for watching, and now let's go back to the video. And from here on, Lenny Kravitz would continue his career as a photographer, working in partnership with different companies such as Dom Perignon or Leica. And with Leica in particular, Kravitz put together a second exhibition of his work titled Drifter, which consisted of a series of photos inspired by Kravitz's nomadic lifestyle featuring, quote, intimate portraits, laconic snapshots, carefully observed scenes from the street and well-composed moments in hotel rooms, all captured during his time on a road, unquote, and this is from Leica's website. And in partnership with Kravitz, Leica released two cameras, the first in 2015, a Leica MP correspondent, which was artificially aged by hand, and was made to resemble the camera Lenny was given by his father at the age of 21. And in 2019, Leica released another special edition in collaboration with Kravitz, this time a Leica M monochrome, with its design inspired by Lenny's lifestyle of an artist and traveling musician. And I know what you're thinking, both these cameras are a bargain if you have spare 20k to drop on a camera or maybe a spare kidney you don't mind getting rid of. So links will be in the description for those of you curious to learn more about it. And talking about this exhibition though, Kravitz said, I love storytelling and I have an interesting life in that I'm all over the place with people of every culture and age and background, rich or poor. I love people and that's the driver for me. I love humanity. And about his use of black and white, he also said that I believe reality thrives in black and white photography. I actually think it's more realistic. My sight improves in black and white. The pretense is stripped away. You're seeing shape and form without the distraction of color and the chromatic choices we make to impress others around us. To me, it's raw beauty. I've always preferred black and white photography and I'll forever be a black and white enthusiast. And I think I'll forever be, just like Lenny Kravitz, a, an enthusiast of black and white photography, but I've also shoot color and I've shot color for a long time, so I kind of do both. And if you want to hear my thoughts on it, I did make a video a while ago about the, you know, black and white versus, photo- versus color, 
a, a debate that never was. And that's the title. So it's suggestive of what I'm going to be talking about. And if you're interested, go watch that video and drop your uh, thoughts down below in the comments of that video. But today also we've learned something very important as well, which is like, you know, as Lenny Kravitz referred in his interviews and etc., he shoots a lot based on feeling what he feels. And it ties up with the video that we did on Lisette Modell a couple of weeks ago. And that was that she said, never shoot anything that you're not passionately, passionately interested in and, you know, shoot from the gut. And I think this is very important. And it's always good to kind of like, you know, um, refer again and again and again to these sort of statements because it is important. It is not about the gear, but about like what you feel and like what you want for your photography. And what you want it to be about, of course, like the people that you love, you know, the themes, ideas, etc. And so we've reached the end of today's episode and this series as well. And that is because it's extremely hard to find a lot of information on a lot of musicians that do photography, more or less because um, in the internet, there's a lot of um, information in books um, about their music, but it's very hard to find their photography because sometimes it's just a sidekick. Or, you know, it's something that they do from time to time. And it's just fair and valid. But looking at this series and probably tying these thoughts with Silver Screen, the series that we had on actors, there are photographers as well. I think it's valid, obviously, um, looking, judging by the comments that you guys left, uh, you know, on different videos. Um, it's valid to question whether or not um, these photographers um, kind of like have a photography career or, you know, like a pr professional side gig, you know, they're professionals in a way with books and etc. If that is because obviously they are musicians, so they had, you know, they were relevant in another industry. So obviously more doors open for them, um, you know, obviously more easily or because, you know, there's their, their name carries a lot of influence. So it's a good opportunity for certain, um, you know, companies to capitalize on that. Or, you know, simply because they love it, they've always probably done it even before they became famous on, you know, a different, in a in different industry. So they are actually talented or they have a real love for it. I feel like overall, it is interesting to discuss these things, but I feel that we should focus on the photo being presented to us and what we can learn from them. And over the course of this series, and of course, you know, Silver Screen as well, we've seen so many people that have been incredibly talented, you know, and they've used photography in so many ways. Nikki Six photographing people with addiction or they have battled with addiction in order to take some personal growth because he himself has dealt with addiction. And we have Patti Smith, whose photography is so poetic. You know, Brian Adams with his fashion shoots, very, very interesting work. And today, Lenny Kravitz, who takes upon a camera with him and just photographs and documents his life. And the importance of documenting life is so, so relevant. So I feel like overall, these examples, you know, they stand out from what we can learn from them and not necessarily from questioning whether or not they're photographers because of this or that or the other. So I think that that's probably the point that I would make or the point that I would sort of um, say that, you know, we can take from these two shows. But just like, um, you know, the saying goes, we close a window, but we can also open another one. Um, obviously I'm closing a show, but it means that we might have a new series and I don't know exactly when, but the concept of this series or kind of like a clue, let's say, is that for quite some time now, I've been respectfully ignoring or declining some suggestions you guys have made on certain fashion photographers. And so, yeah, that should be telling you a lot. So thank you so much for watching and tuning in with the channel. Thank you Aura for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the links down below. Very, very cool. And yeah, I'll see you here for another video very soon. If you like this video, drop a thumbs up and yeah, subscribe for a cookie. Stay safe. Keep shooting film. Peace. I want to get away. I want to fly.